everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how to paint a snow maiden step by step, explained all the way through for beginners. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He is going to be helping me do this by tracking me with one of our robotic cameras, uh, asking me questions that he might see in the live. So if you have a question during today, today's live stream, definitely go ahead and ask. Uh, hang in in patience with me today. These are my first glasses. Mm. Like official, real, have to have um, glasses, and I'm super not used to wearing them yet. Like I got them, I, I picked them up yesterday, and you are getting them today. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they uh, impact how I see in here. I may be taking on, on and off, and that just before y'all ask, like, what is going on with her and all that, that is what's going on with me. And when I say for beginners, I'd like to add this. So everything I do in my show is focused at a new painter and beginners, but there are stages of beginner. There's one who, which means like maybe you haven't painted anything since kindergarten um, and you really need those beginning entry information bits. Then there's the intermediate two hoot, which is, you know, some stuff, but you are definitely still leaning on the tutorial. And there's three hoot, which is that you've got those basic techniques down and you need to understand how they go together. But because we explain everything step by step, that is why we always put this under the beginning umbrella because um, a more advanced art lesson is a demo, which they don't explain anything to you. They just paint it real fast and you're supposed to catch up. Sort of like choreography on that dance show when they're like five, six, seven, eight, and then they go do all this crazy stuff and then everyone knows how to do it, like from just seeing it once. I would be the half hoot of dancing. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> that would never work for me. That's like magic to me. So you guys ready to jump on into this lesson, find out how we're going to make it, what we're going to use to make it, and how you can make this for yourself at home? I'm ready. I'm freaking out about what's on my face, but let's go. Okay. So I think my wife over here with this cutie cutie hat and these cutie cutie glasses is just adorable. Well, this is a gift. This was a gift from Angie, community member Angie. Thank you very much for my fabulous hat. And actually, this is a gift too. Mm, that's right. right? From Terry. This was from Terry. She made this honor Kevin the Kraken. And in a sense, this is a gift as well because we got the glasses thanks to you guys on Super Chat. So thank you guys. Thank you for the vision. <laughs> I don't know how to use yet. It is freaking me out, but it's definitely improved my driving. So that's good for the other people on the road, isn't it? Uh huh. F you certainly saved for me. Saved a life. <laughs> you didn't even <laughs> know you were. You needed to save a life. So here I have a couple of things that we're going to be using for this particular lesson. I have references. Um, these are on the website, so you can get them, and I definitely share them in groups. So this is the full kind of general composition of the image. I've got an up close version of this reference, so we can really see what's happening. I have serial paper here that I'm going to use for the transfer, and I have what's called a traceable here that I'm going to use with the serial paper to get the image on the surface. So those are good things to have if you don't necessarily um, want to paint like all freestyle, which you may not. You may not be. You may be like, I don't want to paint freestyle. Like that's crazy. Why would anybody do that? I'm going to put my traceable up there. So here I have an 11 by 14 surface. This is the size of surface that we always do our paintings on, like always, uh, for the big art quest. Um, so whenever you're doing one of the 12 paintings from the fairy tale series, they will all be on 11 by 14. Mm. We have wishes on this. I must get back to my, I gotta figure out how to use this. You gotta tip your head down and there's this whole thing. The return uh, um, of Sally Larkin's art. So a community member had two boxes of her art taken. That's right. Right? Her and supplies were absconded. It's a weird thing when your art's stolen because it's kind of complimentary, but it's also kind of horrible. So however, that maybe, maybe it was an accident. Maybe they got misplaced. But whatever happened, we would love either a whole bunch of money to come in for that art to her or the art to be returned. Or maybe both. We don't know, but it's some happy ending to that story. Mm. Um, Well-being for foster kids and families. And that's something we just wish all the time. Uh, Charlotte healing. I'm going to have to take these off. I'm not ready for this. Charlotte healing from relief from pain wishes, um, that, uh, oh, she, so Charlotte's wishing for relief from pain. See, I'm really struggling today. <laughs> My eyes are like, what? <laughs> Shall yeah. I read them for you? <laughs> you almost need to. <laughs> wishes that the good kids creators on YouTube are okay after COPPA. Oh, yeah. So, like, you know, all my favorites that are on there and those that might be at risk, like Kirk's Agast or Brave Wilderness, like amazing, responsible, all, everything the Green Brothers do, just all of those channels that could be under that purview who make good, responsible content. I just want to see them survive this. And to that end, I also hope my channel survives 
uh, the 2020 <laughs> updates and changeovers, and that we not only survive and get through it, but that we thrive through it. Indeed. So that's what we wish. Uh, the materials are burnt umber, alizarin crimson, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red, yellow ochre, uh, thalo green, blue shade, titanium white. I'm using carbon black, but you could use Mars black. It's really just one to one on this one. And a thalo blue green shade. So I'm going to put these aside where I can put them on. I'm going to just see how this is going. I don't know how this is going, y'all. You don't know? I don't. But we're going to start the background out using burnt umber oh. and thalo blue. Let's just put out those a two? And white, titanium white. Okay. So burnt umber... Dun, 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 dun. I have these little interesting hooks down here so I can put stuff away. I'm going to see how that works today. <laughs> Might be slightly challenging as I have to pick them back up and put out more colors, but you know we're going to see. We're going to start out with a basic field background, right? So, like, as we're painting, um, we're going to start out with a background that's sort of uniform and then start to build up some of these values and shades and things as we go. I may put out at this stage a little bit of my black paint, like over here, just in case I need to do some deepening beyond what my phthalo blue and burnt umber would do. If you don't have burnt umber, just use burnt sienna. The difference will be that maybe it gets a little greener mm. in its nature, but it will still very feel very wintry, so don't worry. I'm just putting these down until I need them. Didn't your little shelfy thing in my new shelfy thing that i got from michael's during the sale i am not <laughs> sponsored by this company guys do not misunderstand <laughs> they just are the local <laughs> store that we like <laughs> just you know just to be clear it's just my close art resource i'm gonna mist my canvas and go ahead and make those watercolor wishes and blend those in so that those words don't impact the final composition if you do wishes or intentions this is a nice step to do and also if you're painting more complicated paintings it's a really good idea to have a little micro mister like this around it will save you a lot of difficulty now i'm going to come over here with my big number 30 ruby satin brush this right here and i'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and some of my burnt umber and i mix them together and i'm going to get a neutral and you're going to see it's almost exactly the background that you're seeing so we're going to get a neutral color and just paint the whole canvas that. Sound good? Mm hmm If you need to tone it down a bit, if it's too blue, guess what you do? You get a little more burnt umber into it. And it will calm that color down quite a lot, as you can see. And we're just painting the whole surface with this first field of color. I'm realizing I should have taped around my surface. <laughs> That's okay. I will mess up my winter mural and have to repaint it. Darn it. <laughs> Happens. The great gift of art uh, is that once you can do it, you don't ever worry about any of that stuff because it's inside of you. It's not really on the canvas. You can always duplicate a painting. There's this weird point in your art journey where you stop saying, I, it was the best thing I ever did and I'll never be able to do it again. And you start saying, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> when do you need it? Bye. So it's just part of your journey as an artist. Can you see me just really pulling the paint in and loading up? Now, there's a couple reasons why this first coat is particularly useful. Is that um, not only does it give us a nice uniform color to work from and build up from, but this coating will correct for any issues that your surface might have. That first layer of acrylic gives you a great substrate for all the next layers of acrylic. I don't have to worry too much about it all being exactly one tone or that the brush strokes are all completely smooth. Right now at this stage, I'm just trying to get this color on the surface everywhere and enjoy that feeling of the paint. Sorry, I'm okay. <laughs> were, were, were you worried that we were worried you were not okay? Yes, I'm, uh, again, I'm like, it's like awkward socialness today, isn't it? Because <laughs> there's nothing like being socially awkward when you're online. No danger there. No. <laughs> At all. So you can see I've got this little coating here. You've coated the surface with paint. 
So what's up with my vision is I have trouble seeing far away, but I see really good in the mid range and my eyes can get real tired on small stuff. I see okay there, but they get real fatigued out real quick. So apparently I was supposed to go uh, years ago to get eye glasses. Yes. And just didn't do that portion of my life. No, you were just like, no. <laughs> I think I just was like, I'm fine, whatever. So you can see that's how we start that out. Now in the next stage, what we're going to do is we're going to break down our reference image and we're going to start blocking in the big overall shapes and zones. Um, if you really enjoy this piece, again, there are, this is the 11th in the series. We have one more after this. They're all themed fairy tales. Um, most of them are multi -porter. This is the first one we're going to just do one and done. Mm. It's like, there's a lot going on this holiday season and I didn't want to not do it this month. So. <laughs> Oops, one and done it is. Okay, so once I have that in, which is always nice, I might apparently wash every single palette knife I have. No, um, You did. You washed them all. I'm going to go ahead and take some of my phthalo blue and my brown and just mix them together, right, as a base kind of color so that I can sketch some things in. Isn't that nice? This is a very cold scape. She, yes. Someone had suggested that she would be very easily converted into Moana, hmm. and then I was like, only if she's visiting Elsa and Anna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was just like, she's standing by a frozen lake. She is. And she definitely needs a coat. She definitely does. <laughs> maybe, yeah. the, maybe the cold The cold never bothered her anyway. The cold never bothered her anyway. She's going to get on to the next adventure. She's going to take the next right step. Is okay, she? so I don't. that could go all day. I'm so about Olaf right now. I saw Frozen 2, and um, even if you don't have kids, I highly recommend it. <laughs> so what we're going to do, if you'll notice in our reference, right, is that we have these further, the furthest regions back, and then we have some very loose landscape coming forward. But really, the only thing that's in focus is she's our central focus. This is a little more defined. These are a little more defined. But this all back here is fairly soft and uh, very chill. Hmm. So let's just think about what do we have up here? Not the upper third, but this upper zone range is a little bit of distant potential sort of scape, isn't it? There's even maybe like a little, so far away, look how far away it is. So I'm using a number eight cat's tongue and I'm just taking my brown, my burnt umber and my phthalo blue mix. And I'm just going to come here and just softly create that little zone. A little bit. It's nice because you can use this brush to blend it out. Look at that little zone. Zones are okay. And I can kind of separate this little hill from this little hill by adding a lighter value of the blue back here. Isn't that wild how that does? Yeah. So I thought so too. You thought so too what? Um, someone was saying that the reference photo was looking a little odd. And so I just went over there and did a little color adjustment to it. I, and they were right. It looked a little green. I just mm. pulled some green out of it. I think that the um, sometimes the reference images that I get, uh, they come into my system weird. So. I just send you what I have and print out. Yeah. No, I, I think there, this was something on, on my end. I just... Uh, uh, technology. You know. And well, that's something that's good to talk about because you might find something online and be like, uh, why doesn't this look a little more like what I'm seeing in, you know, one space? And it's because the reference may be color balanced off. Yeah. Now here we have this sort of, in landscape painting, you have a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. And even though this is a figurative piece, we have a figure in here, this is really mostly landscape with this sort of figure, central figure in it. So those same rules apply. So we have this far away, distant, blurry kind of landscape. And then we have a middle ground here. And we're going to have to put in a shoreline. Let's zig in a little shoreline. If you look at the reference and where things are in their aspect ratio, you can kind of go, oh, well, just below the halfway point, there's a bank on the shore. And I'm going to come on the toe of my brush. And talk maybe a little bit about that bank on the shore. 
That's really all we're doing, right? And then you could sit there and say, just let yourself know where you've got your upward little bank coming here. So over from the right hand side and coming down out into the water. I can see your reference in picture now, so I can adjust my picture. Oh, okay. To... <laughs> I'm just Is... going to match yours. Doop. See, just done. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. And <laughs> that then was just easy. a little bit of landscape for her to stand on that's here. And I've made her a little bit bigger because I want her to be a little more focal than she was. That was a choice that I made artistically. So let's look at this right here. Isn't that good? So we blocked it in. You wouldn't think that was a big deal, guys. But believe it or not, it's huge. It's epic. It's monumental. Because what you're doing here is you're mentally zoning where things are, where objects are. And you could be really new to painting or into painting for a while. This is part of your job as an artist, whether you're an abstract artist or a figurative artist, it's never going to change how you place things, where you place them in the canvas, what's far away, what's in the middle space, what's in the foreground, what's central, what's focal. Those are always your decisions. And you can always get something out of it when you're doing this. Things that are far away tend to be a little blurrier. You know? You know what I mean, buddy? I don't. It's okay. <laughs> Man, I can color correct. You can color correct. <laughs> that, that I know about. I don't want to use... Well, I could use my number 30 and get a lot done. That's a nice brush. I like that one. It's, it's one of my favorites. And it's going to get a bunch of work done for me real fast. I am going to take a little bit of my white paint into my blue here. And make a very light color. Maybe even put a little brown into it. I'm going to try to just make it distant and neutral. And we're going to come across here and just lighten up this middle ground landscape that we've got all the way up to about there. Just a bit lighter. I don't mind if what is underneath sh shines through. That's actually beneficial for me. Cover it up big. Cover it up quick. There we go. Look at that. Just some distant little kind of thought out snowscape. Do a little of this darker value. Add some brown into it. Some brown into it. Maybe put some distant little up and down little marks. See, I'm just making these distant little trees out of focus they're, they're far away they're we're aware of them but we're not gonna super focus on them and take a second brush and blend them over blended them <laughs> sometimes you just want to when all else goes wrong get your blending brush out you blended them into the background. When all else goes wrong, get a blending brush out. They just faded into the distance. They do. They do. You can get that to have happen. Come back in here again. We want these little objects here, but we want them to be out of focus. And gentle and soft. There we go. Look at that. Just in hell. Mm. I love when stuff does that. It's like, uh, it's a whole landscape just popped out of nowhere. Now we have some very the little dark lines that come through this zone. And I'm just taking my brush on its little edge. Look, it's just got a little bit of paint. And I'm just putting in some of that tonality. Come underneath and soften it. And if I need to, guess what I'm going to come back with? My blending brush and blend it in. This is a fabulous tool. That begs the question. 
Will it blend? It will always blend. <laughs> we should make a spoof video on that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Are they even a thing on the internet anymore? I, you know. I'm going to get some more white onto this brush and add some more highlights into the background. hasn't asked themselves the question, can I blend a hockey puck in my kitchen blender? I mean. I don't know. Everyone that has an oyster? Every Canadian <laughs> Some hockey with an oyster blender is ever. gonna like send me hate mail now. <laughs> I love my oyster. So you can see, I'm just I've got this bead of white that I pulled out, and I'm adding some little bits of nice distant snow snow stuff. And see, just come in here, soften it out. But they're they're wonderful, aren't they? Far away landscapes. It is. That's that actually just you you you. Canadaized that coast real fast. What was what did I do? You made it Canadian. That this great, is Canadian. I feel like that's very like uh, it's stereotyping. Northern, it's very cold. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's very northern. I, I, I just generically. <laughs> Karen Scott is here, girl. I'm thinking the joke. I'm just not saying it because it's the internet and they don't know the backstory. <laughs> but you're welcome to tell it in chat. <laughs> Oh, Karen's here too. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. Don't, she, yeah, no, I, I almost cracked the joke myself. <laughs> it's really hard not to. There's a very funny joke that happened on our first uh, in-person event where people came to see me and we all painted together. And uh, we had a bunch of Canadian Sherpettes, Sherpazoids come in and they had some very funny stuff happen to them on the plane that I'm not going to share uh, verbally. Because mm -hmm. again, the internet is crazy. Yeah, and it will blame us mm -hmm. <laughs> and i didn't do it i just no. find it funny so <laughs> that's all it is so i've got my nice <sighs> fabulous one inch ultimate varnish brush and i'm gonna come get some of my darker blue do you love how like limited palette this is mm -hmm. i'm gonna come here and start to put in a and i'm just using see how the brush like does this clumpy thing you do. Yeah, clumpy things are great in painting. Oh, I'm embrace in. the clump. Oh, because it made that that very crazy shoreline, didn't it? Yeah, and you, normally that would be something that would kind of make me worried that that's not what I want. The the brush would make it worried that it wasn't what you wanted. Well, that doesn't look very like uh, it. Like, you don't feel I, confident. <laughs> well, like it it comes out very erratic. Like it's not. You know, like whenever I, I always predict a brush to like smoothly lay paint out in an yeah. even tone. Nobody and needs no smooth brushes. No, that's all very <laughs> mixy, matchy, scritchy, scratchy. And anywhere your lines are too hard, you just come back with the tips of this and just work it through and you can soften any part of this out. Oh, wow. That needs it. That, I'm going to grab like... some more. The other thing I like is it gets into this sort of like little edged thing. But you can do this with any brush. You could just use a bright. You can use anything that you've got. You seem to be using that one to do many different techniques. Like it's kind of scratchy, scratchy, then it's all blendy. <laughs> it's just become my. It's just become my brush baby. It's just become my brush baby. So I'm gonna start to smooth out the little ice rink we've got going here. It's the Sherpa version of a K bar. What is it? What? Multi-purpose knife for the military. Oh. Just smoothing out this zone. And then come here and start to... Smooth out that zone. So what I want is a dark value along here. And just a slight soft shadow. Getting into my ice space. You know your ice space? Mm hmm I'm going to come here, and I'm going to make a very soft, blendy little dark value into my ice space. When I rinse this out and I go to apply it to my canvas again, something that I do is I get all of the water out of it. See how, and I'm squeezing it very hard. The brutality of what I do to this brush is why it matters what brush you use. But there are other brushes that will do this. What you'd be looking for is a synthetic mop at least one inch. Mm. This is the one I like, but there are others. 
<laughs> this one is my brush. So you can see I've just softened that out where it's that diffused kind of reflection. And the next thing that you can always do is if you come down, I'm just very lightly flicking zoom in to down. See that. Huh? See, I gotta zoom in so they can see the the vertical marks because Yeah, that's nice. And then you just come back across very soft. Such a gentle One of the things is that the it's fun for me. <laughs> well, if I don't zoom in, the resolution can't capture the brush strokes. It just disappears because the literally we don't have enough pixels to show it. So I have to zoom in quite a bit sometimes so that people can see those textures. Now I'm painting on the corner of my number 30. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll just get on the corner of a brush and use it. If you're not confident in your brush yet, use a round, a small detail round. Right, you're going to want to use around. I'm going to pull that down. I'm probably going to have to do that more than once. I need a little more paint here to do this with. Coming along. Getting it right in there. Get it right on the corner of my little brush. And I just sit back. I'm very calm about this. I'm going to tap this out. Tap, tap, tap. When I say tap, what I mean is micro little movements up and down. See how we're just doing micro little movements up and down? Yep. And it allows you to kind of drop what I would say is little focused areas of paint. Now I'm going to take my fingers and smooth this together. You could do this with any brush you have, right? What you want is a little edge. And I'm going to pull this down. We're creating these little soft reflections that are over here. And I can come back here. Look at that. And continue to out of focus. Now I can also come in on the edge here. Just take advantage of the edge that I have. This is another nice way to get it. And I'm building up. It's easy to add paint. It can be kind of a pill to remove it. There we go. This corner over here has a lot more kind of dark reflection to it. Now, before it all gets dry, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this brush out. I have like three of these, and normally I would switch it out, but I recognize that they're kind of an investment, so I'm trying to show you how to get through with just one. I'm going to come across. Look at this. When I come across, what happens? You see the reflection happen? Mm -hmm. Nice. I had to take out a little of my hill there to get that in. But it can be really tough to get those blended soft reflections in when you're not used to it. It will get easier. It does get easier. I'm going to get into my number eight. And this is just so I can do a thing. There is this really gorgeous tree branch reflection. It kind of comes down here. Comes down at an angle. Has a pretty dark value. And there's a bit of the branch that comes up here. And notice I'm just tapping this in. Just tap that in. And I'm going to let it have a minute. I'll talk to you for a minute. Because what I'm wanting to do is the paint not to dry. But I'm wanting it to tack just some. Hmm. I'm wanting it to bind a little bit to what's underneath before I can softly blend it away. Because I don't want it to all go away. Gotta I'm going to sip my coffee and I'm going to say that you guys are beautiful and wonderful. And I'm sorry we don't have Texas snowflakes today, which is kind of ironic considering it's a snow scene. But I don't know, man. The further into winter you get, the harder it is to run down bubbles. <laughs> it's that true. don't have to come from online. And even then, challenging. Hmm. Well, it's a good time to have a coffee break. Mm -hmm. mm, coffee. Mm, coffee. And I can, I can, mm. 
I don't know. It's just, this is a very chill day. We've had like. It's a chill day, man. It's a good. I don't really even have too much like funny commentary other to say that I. You just are shy of the funny commentary. I'm a little worried about you. Well, I can can walk the fine line between tacky and not, but can your pain? (laughs) We'll find out if my painting is tacky. All right. So I'm going to come here and just begin to soften some of this. And I'll go ahead and take this down to where I know I have the hill, right? Mm-hmm. Because it would blend into the hill. And you can even come back in. What? Do that cross here again? Yeah. Very powerful. The cross and down. And let's wipe in here. Soften this a bit. Just a bit. What are you doing? You're trying to make your painting look how I've been seeing. Out of focus. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the real reason why you went and got got your glasses was so you could better see the TV. Yeah. Because you see the you see the the, the easel just fine, and you can see the computer monitor just fine. Yeah. But it was like the TV was becoming oh, and driving. Wait a minute. We the, we've had to go to a bunch of events, and I realized when I was driving that I was really struggling. So there, I have those dark, soft reflections that are happening there. You're not really that stressful of a thing to put in if you know what you're putting in. So I'm going to take my base color mix into my white. And let's put our little hill back. There we go. We're just putting that back in. I'm using my number eight cat's tongue. Mm. I'm painting in this lighter value of white, which is implying the closer up snowbank. It has layers, much like odors. And I think I'll go ahead and start to lay in this space just because it paints out and we can and we can start to see the basic composition Mm. now the figure she's going to be a bit of an event for us yeah yeah but that's why we're using these relaxed methods today so we can get into her and just enjoy that journey Just smoothing that out. Now we have a second little interesting thingy here. So it's like a little bankment that was kind of stuck out from his friend. That was really interesting. I liked it. I liked it. Guess what? What's that? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're putting shadows in. We have to put the shadows in. You cannot see the light without the shadow. Well. Okay. Not on your canvas. <laughs> you have no value there. Just, well, there's just a Coons painting. Is what it is. <laughs> Maybe a Rauschenberg. But it's just a group of people who just painted just the field of color. People have mixed responses to that. I'll tell That's you that true. right now. That's true. It's very true. So I'm just is bringing it this little value here as I go. Here's the trick. I can try to do it with this one again. It may be too big, but we'll see if I smush. Remember, you can finger shape your brushes to be a custom brush. I don't think I talk about that enough. The act of finger shaping your brushes to make a custom brush. And then back, like we've been wanting to do. See? All icy. So the difference between a water reflection and an ice reflection is the ice reflection tends to be a little softer and a little more diffused. Right? There, there's the snow. It doesn't necessarily have that pure, crisp, like, ice rink kind of effect. And water can be, like, 
a perfect mirror almost if it's still enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? But, but frozen surfaces tend to be diffused. So be it this snowy landscape or another snowy landscape, I highly suggest. Look at that. That's, that embankment yeah. is pretty nice. It's just nice, right? Yeah. Just a nice little embankment. Doing embanky things. I need to put out some more white. What you got there? I'm get some white. I am going to tone it with a bit of the color. What brush are you using there? I'm using my number eight cat's tongue. I was going to say. Oh, were you? Yeah. I it's okay did that not you believe. asked. <laughs> it's okay because I have. Sometimes John reminds me to do those little important bits. And I'm going to come add some highlights to the top of some of these little spaces where I might have a Karen. lighter value of the snow. Yeah. No, Karen. Up Hi, in, Karen. Up, up in Canada. She knows about the snow. She says this is a beautiful desert landscape. <laughs> I know it's only missing huts. <laughs> Couldn't help it. <sighs> Sometimes you got to come to events <laughs> to catch the jokes. So excited. I've been like getting ready for our next big event, paint along event. So that's been a lot of fun. Getting everything arranged. Not on a day like this. Because this no. would be the suckiest day to go outside and paint. But on our next Art Sherpa retreat, we're going to do plein air painting. In, yes. a, in a much nicer location that isn't frozen. <laughs> yes. If she were standing next to a hot spring, that would probably be much um, warmer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <guessing>. exactly. <laughs> I'm so excited about the next retreat. All right, so I'm going to come and take my brush, and I'm going to break this up into bits. See how we're going to break this up into bits, bits, bits? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tap it up and down, some tappies. And I'm going to very cautiously, see if I can. No, it's too, there's still too, too, many, too many bits. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to have to just do it the old-fashioned way, slowly. So whenever you're painting snow, there's these little bits of dark spots of, you know, I guess what I would say is it's uh, little rocks or things that are stark and bleak against the frozen scape. Stuff that's fallen out of trees. Yeah. Stuff that's growing up out. And you gotta, there's little areas where there'll be deadfall and there would definitely be deadfall here because you see the trees literally coming off the canvas to surround her. Mm-hmm. So you know there's deadfall. You know, it would be a surprise <laughs> is if Deadpool showed up. Hey, well, here's the surprise. This isn't actually a painting of a beautiful snowman. It's a painting of Deadpool. <laughs> Have fun, you two. You know, if Take anybody. That, Papa. If Deadpool any, it, is not intended for children. No. <laughs> and you don't see Fred Savage here. <laughs> Sorry. I'm okay. I'm going to come and do a little bit of this over here. Just a smidge, cause, just because I know it's going to be a little thing. That's too much. If ever I get too big or too consistent of a piece, what I'll do is I'll take my brush down, and I'll come back and just sort of clean it up a bit. I'm so about the long joke. I'm willing to like do the big art quest so that I can paint this painting with Deadpool in it. Yeah, we're too about the long joke, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm going to just blend that a bit. There we go. There we go. Kind of soften that out and come back and try again. Try again, my friends. Try again. Number eight cat's tongue. Still just trying to touch out little bits. Oh. Just little small bits of dark reality, but nothing too crazy or intense. Now, rinsing these out. I have to let everything here have a little moment. 
a little space. And while it is, let's find the twigs. The twigs, you say? Yeah, that's all these little twiggly bits. Where does that? They're everywhere. We're going to start out with some that are kind of the darkest value that we have. And we're going to come here. And this is a number four round with a very sharp point. If you, right. what you're looking for in your own paint box is whatever brush you have that gives you the sharpest, finest lines. Okay. That's where you're going. And come right here. And just make these little, these little bits of twigs and grass and things that are here. Kind of frozen. From the ice back here. You know how they have them. Lots of it, guys. Lots of it. Little tiny tips, and you wander it around, and you want to give it that sense of things. And if you need to, you can always soften it, but you'd have to do it super gently. Mm. And I'm just softening it super gently. So, like, if any of it got too in focus, you could take it down. Nice little out of focus bits there. Trees. Trees. Trees, sir. So I'm going to come into my black here and I'll go ahead and put a little blue into my black just so it kind of ties into the whole piece. And I'm not going to do like, I'm not going to get too crazy, but I am going to put these in because I like these. Now I might make adjustments based on my feeling about like what would be an attractive tree branch right because sometimes what happens in nature it just happens in nature but it don't need to happen on your canvas because it's a hot ugly mess mm. right just because there's power lines in your reference doesn't mean you have to put power lines in your painting not unless you want to not unless they please you if they don't please you they can just suck it <laughs> which I realize now sounds a little intense <laughs> but still true I want my branches to be a little more whimson right a little more ah. I don't know I'm going to bring, I mean, you can be like, oh, yeah, like, I like the idea of this one kind of bowing up here. Maybe a little branch off this one here. You decide. <laughs> so I'm still going to kind of, you know, frame her in tree branches, but maybe not so messy. <laughs> I'm just, again, still just using the number four. When I want my lines thicker, I press harder. When I want them thinner, I press lighter. <laughs> While I'm here, I'm going to take my traceable that I have, and I'm going to test put it where I want it to be. And I'm going to give myself a sort of like 
I'm going to take some charcoal here and just let myself know where I think she's going to be about so that when I'm putting these branches down, I'm just aware of where she's in, she's in, the, in the piece. Man, hmm. so, something came along and set off my allergies. I don't know, but I could use some AC in this house so bad. I'll see what I can do over here. I think if I angle some stuff, I could probably do that. Let me set this over here. That'd be amazing. So I'm going to put a bunch of little tiny branches in. If we were smart creators. We'd pre-film all this. <laughs> and go, branches! But basically, it just takes a minute. And you've got to figure out where compositionally... Oh, yes. Hopefully it doesn't mess everything up so much on the sound, but I really appreciate it, babe. Just <sighs> cooking. That's it. So well, right now I'm standing back and I'm just sort of taking in some of my composition, right? Some of what I got going. Just thinking about how that is. Right? Where's my balance? Where do I want the branches? How fine do I want them? You know, you need enough for it to feel like in the summer, this particular wonderful tree would be full of green leaves or maybe pink flowers or... Don't forget to wander them around and it was sort of interesting. There we go. And we're just putting those in, getting a sense of those. There's some real interesting ones that kind of almost make a wishbone. Putting them in. There we go. We've got them coming in. Can you see them? Yes, I do. It's going to be standing up. While you're up, can I get you to heat my coffee? I'm still just putting in branches, guys. I'll just go get paint and... <laughs> Thank you, John. We're here for a minute, so... Coffee makes a better Sherpa, so we're just on the toe of our brush. Whenever I say that, I'm really just talking about very light pressure and not flaying the bristles I dipped in water. I'm swirling out my paint, and I'm just reloading, getting some more black paint. See how that's going? Just putting out those little branches. You just want to put them as many places as you can think of. It's okay if they go behind her a bit. It just gives some spacing and scale to things. You know, I like to just wander them and try to, sometimes it's nice to break some branches and kind of take them some different places you don't expect them to be. Now, one thing that can be nice is if you come back through and go into your, oh, powerhouse. That's okay. 
I'm going to get my blue, my, my mixture of my phthalo blue and my burnt sienna. And I'm going to roll my brush a whole bunch to annoy John. <laughs> I'm going to just add some branches here. Maybe our... a little bit in the background color so that they can kind of feel a little like out of focus. Maybe it does. Let's see. I just like to put them places. Have some fun with it. And just kind of throw those out anywhere. And as you layer it up, you know, they will take on. Little feeling. That sort of stark winter branchy landscape. Stark winter? Yes. Boy, Starks know about. Just, oh, no, I didn't walk into that, did I? I did. I did. I'm not over Game of Thrones yet, John. I wouldn't start. Years, That's okay. years before I'm going to forgive HBO and our armor. <laughs> <laughs> Just everybody involved on that project. <laughs> There's no forgiveness. <laughs> Man. Oh. So. I'm going to maybe kind of add a we, little. Two things we don't talk about on this show. Politics and our armor. John thought he was at an event, and I was actually like, run him down and tell him how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to know. I'm like, seriously, you want me to run up to some random dude and say, so, in case you're R.R. R. Martin, the art Sherpa would like to send you a message. <laughs> she was like, yes, tell him. And I was like, I, no. think, I think no. Yeah, but he pretended that he would. <laughs> just to keep me calm <laughs> I just think Daenerys needed more respect from everybody than that she I did mean, too I just, she... I just disbelieve it right Right. it's just like just not understanding women on a fundamental level um, just like one day we're just going to go crazy and burn. sorry I don't, actually I won't even say anything because maybe you haven't seen Game of Thrones yet don't and I don't want to ruin it for you Game of Thrones ended. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna Ma I'm gonna hair dry this. <laughs> I would say marginally. I don't know. It's hard to say if it was better or worse than the ending of Lost. It's kind of a split there. They both had their, you know, pros and cons. In the meantime, if you're new to this show, we like to remind you to not use heat when um, drying your paint. And the reason for that is that it actually can affect your paint. Um, it can cause adhesion issues. It can cause uh, the paint to get soft so that when you're painting on your next layer, it won't, uh, it, or if you're drawing, especially like as you start using chalk over this, if you start to draw and it's used heat, the chalk will stick inside that paint. So it's best not to use heat at all. It can cause color shift and other problems. Uh, not so bad in pro paints, but but uh, heat will affect all paints, pro or not, negatively, especially when it comes to getting making them sticky and soft. So just uh, make sure that, especially when you're going to be drawing next, not to use heat. Darn it, I just made it wet again. You did. There's a button of muting. There it is. It's just, that's her drying the surface for some reason. There we go. Look at that. You're back. Snow. Super no. easy paint. 
So. <laughs> And Patty is here to support. Hi, Patty. She's supporting us with more shifty talk about heat and pain. Thank you, Patty. Thank we don't have bubbles to celebrate it. We don't. We, you know, in the spirit of the cold. I could, I could do the old school secret dance. It's like, this is. Oh, do you want to see Patty? If you just got in, if you just got in, look. Check this out. I'm no longer a danger to other drivers on the road. <laughs> this is no longer a one driver household <laughs> <sighs> ah, good times so so weird how this gets tight down my back it, oh yeah her little wire <laughs> wireless mic so i'm gonna do my traceable and i will show you how it do, it's done it's actually a pretty simple process yeah the first trick when you're doing a traceable and i may do I have scissors out here uh, do you have scissors? Mm -mm. I don't know. I'll I don't go, know I'll, what I've done what, with them. I'll go find you scissors while I get it. My oh, it's, well, it'll, that'd be cool. So first thing is I like to use tracing paper. And the reason I like to use tracing paper is that it is transparent. And therefore, I can place my objects or the, the central subject that I want to maybe trace on where I want it because I can see through it. Now. I provide you with a free traceable, but if you print those out off your computer, they're obviously opaque and you can't do this. You can buy tracing paper. There's links in the description below. Make one of these for yourself for any image that you have. I'm gonna just cut this to fit my surface a little bit better. See, <laughs> you can do that. You can cut things to fit. Isn't that nice? And I might use some extra tape here to just improve uh, where it's affixed to the surface. So that's my tip there. I would do it. I get that that may not be on budget. Um, you know, you've also got a bunch of different resources that I give you guys on the website. Oh, I'm still here. On the website so that um, you can, if you have different options, then what I'm using, you have uh, some other choices on how you can get it done. This is Serral paper. Of this company, I've used everything. I have finally decided that I really only like the yellow and the white because I feel like the other ones are difficult to remove and tend to stain. 100% of why I feel that way. And so what I do is once I get my paper on where I want it, then I can put my, well, in theory, I can put my <laughs> trace this transfer paper down and then I can also tape it down. Why do I tape things down when I'm tracing, you might wonder. That's because that when you're trying to transfer an image, whether it's projection or whether it's this type of transfer method, you don't want things moving while you're doing it, otherwise, or your whole rendering will just be completely ruined. So I really, 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 really like to tape it down so it doesn't do that to me. Now, I am gonna wear some glasses for this. Let's, I will test the reading portion of my glasses here. To see I'm gonna if have I can to, do the thing. While you're doing that, I'm going to thank I'm Lydia. Testing. Oh, that's the wrong pencil. That's charcoal. There we go. Lydia is supporting us in Super Chat. She gave us a super awesome sticker that says, thank you for being a pair of shakers, I think, which is <laughs> it's a little sticker. Pairs, that's just awesome. Well, it's a pair, and it's <laughs> shaking it, and, and like you shake me around. So I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome too. I'm trying to find a pencil that is sharp enough and uh, I'll sharpen one here and hard enough that I can get a very detailed line transfer. So there's, these are the multifocals. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they have a transition on them too. So, cause basically, cause I can get one pair of glasses is what it is. So <laughs> I'm sure many other people feel that way. When I went through that whole glass journey, oh, I, have to was say, so funny. I was so shocked. I really thought, uh, you know, they were going to be like, shock. I did. I thought they were going to be like 50 to a hundred bucks. <laughs> I did. Cause <laughs> why would they be any more? It's, you know, what is kind of crazy. And then John tried to tell me, and then I did one of those like white things, where, even though he had glasses and i never had glasses. I was like, yeah, but it's been a really long time since you've had to wear glasses, and I bet things have changed, and they've probably figured out how to mass-produce these. 
yeah. and bring the cost Actually, down. Can I get on a personal rant there? I think oh, it's please. just completely atrocious that glasses cost as much as they do, especially given modern practices of technology where, you know, pretty much all lens combinations could be manufactured in such a way that on a generic set of glasses, they could be made super cheap, available to people. So, yeah, I have to say I agree <sighs> with you. Over. I have to say that I absolutely agree with you on that. I, f I found it uh, kind of immoral almost. So now I've included tons of folds and information here in case you're just not great yet at catching all those shadows and folds. And you got really excited about this project because there was folds in the fabric. So we're really going to talk about that. And unlike the Selkie, these are going to be a lot easier folds. Mm. <laughs> so we won't be stuck for six months. Oh, good times. And I'm just kind of including that information and then down to her Doc Martens, which I think is very funny. First no maiden to have Doc Martens, but my little daughter wears Doc Martens, so it works for me. What I would say is that uh, having worn slippers in the snow, they don't keep your feet warm. True that. Yep. You, you probably only make that mistake once. Just one time? So yeah, I got to tip my head up to do the reading glass part of it, but it's working. Okay. Now, I'm going to guess that I, I'm going to switch back to my other ones real soon, but I'm just saying I got through. In a pinch, if I didn't have any other glasses, it would be okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <sighs> so, woohoo! I'm going to have to say thank you to a to a to a wonderfully generous Sherpette from denmark but hi uh i'm going to guess miss chamberlain has a very interesting name where you have an unusual combination of letters together that i've not pronounced before so i'm gonna guess Ankh. are you suffering from american i'm dude i have this big fat western tongue that says hey y'all what's going on but i think I'm going to guess it's ink. ink Feel free to correct ink. him. It yeah. is okay. It's, 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 it's A-N-I-K. A-N-I-K? It's a, right. Yeah, I think you're good. That's what I would have gone for. I, yeah, so I'm just, you know, this is me trying. You have a beautiful name that I don't know how to pronounce, but would love to learn how. So I'm going to Google it while we're waiting. That's a good idea. You know, Google will tell you how to pronounce things. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm it, does it this awesome robot overlord voice that doesn't feel at all like my GPS is talking to me? Yeah. Deep fake. Deep fake. What? <laughs> it's just internet memes. <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't know what we're saying. Don't get me like banned off YouTube. What are you saying? <laughs> no, it's fine. Ah, all three of the people got it. All three? Sure. We have three people with the live? Uh, I know we got more than that. We got like almost 400 people here. <laughs> okay. I'm really <laughs> glad. Like, wow. We have messed up if only three people came today. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got my, like three people get my joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. I think, guys, as I'm going, I didn't really see any place I'm going to pull in my phthalo green, so I'm going to say I'm probably not going to pull that back out again. You. And then my list to reflect that because I just don't see any place I'm going to need it. Um, sometimes you'll use it in skin tones and things, but I, again, don't think I'm going to need that here either. Um, I will pull in some cadmium yellow. And, and I do have some tinting white here, which can be nice when you're doing skin tones. Tinting it, white. What's, where did they put that? Uh, tinting white is this. Uh-huh. You could use zinc white or mixing white. Where, it's a transparent white, and when you're doing skin tones or atmospheric effects, it can be really profoundly useful. Where did you put that? I didn't see where you put it on the surface. Oh, the... maybe I didn't. Okay. Maybe I didn't. You, just, you talked about it, but I didn't see where you yeah, put it. maybe I didn't. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a master skin tone for her. Um, it's a very simplistic skin tone. If you would like to know how to make different skin tones, yes, I've got videos on basic, very simplistic skin tone variations. However, there are an 
unbelievable number of skin tone variations. In fact, I've included my favorite recipe book for it that has 400 different skin tone mixes. So that, and it's, it's not even a complete, like, compendium of all skin tone mixes. But it's a fantastic one. It uses stuff that you can find, and the instructions are very clear and concise and duplicatable. And so you can make anything the way you need to make it. It's down in the description. It's an affiliate link, but it's down there, and I love it. And also, look for it in garage sales and in resale bookshops, because a lot of times people drop that. I think I've actually almost brought that publishing back, because it's just, it's so good. Well, my, my mom gave it to me. I gave it to my daughter. It's like a whole thing. Hmm? Well, I was going to say, I scrolled back up here, and I noticed that I missed one of Patty's little supports there. She stuck two in off, so I'm going to say, thank you, Patty. Thank and you, Krista. Patty. And and we I don't want to miss Krista from Canada. She also support. She says this paint is gorgeous. Thank you, Cinda. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for hanging in for with me today, and not making me um have to go through this like at the speed of light. Uh, on the big air quest, we go through at a more relaxed pace because I want people to be able to digest what we're doing. And yes, I'm doing this in one session today, but I don't want to get into that super fast sharp speed that I get into sometimes. For this, because again, I want you guys to be able to take in what we're doing. Mm. Mm. So thank you for the support. I appreciate it a lot. Now, um, I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to take out my little references here, right? So we've got a skin tone, and let's look at that. Um, what, what I would like you to ask yourself as a student is, what do you think the primary value or color in her skin tone mix is? Hmm ochre and maybe a little bit of burnt umber. I'll show you a trick. So there it is. That's a little bit of ochre with burnt umber, right? Yeah. Take a small brush. Um, I like to do this. It's a good reason to get photo paper to print things out. Come here and touch there. Hold on a second. Right, and then maybe touch in the shadow. Oh, that's that shadow value, isn't it? So you know that's your shadow mix. Now, how light do I have to go to hit her main skin tone? Right about there is pretty good. So that value there is about the middle. I haven't even, I have not even added any red to this. Yeah. Right. And that's important to know. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm worked a little bit of it in. I'm going to do the alizarin because looking at her skin, I could say that there's some alizarin. That's a, still a little pink. I'm going to come here, adding a little white and a little more ochre. See what we're doing? Yeah. I like that the best. So a smidge, and I mean a smidge of the pink, right? And quite a lot of the white. So the trick will be when you're over here, and I may pull some of this out. I take a bead and we'll see where that gets us because I want to save some of this for the shadow. And we know how dark the mixture was. From what we did earlier, that spot is right there, isn't it? So what you're going to do is try to get this to that basic darkness. You can always come back over there and go, am I there yet? I don't need that much shadow. I'm okay. And then you can always take it and test again on your reference. I'm going to need all of it to get to the reference. I'll just make some more of the first one. There we go. So we finally got back into it. So once you get there, her middle range of skin, right? Yes, you've got to have lighter spots and darker spots and all of that. And let's go ahead and 
do her shadow again. Oh, Christine just gave us some support and love out here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. You know, your guys' support really makes it possible for us to do this show and continue to do what we're doing. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we love having you guys with us, just thank hanging you. out. So without you, it would just be Cinnamon and I goofing off with some cameras. <laughs> We'd still do it, but it would be sad just, and pitiful. Would, and I would be like, John, why does no one want to watch? <laughs> I think it would become a mental illness at that point. <laughs> it probably would. <laughs> so I just go until I find enough of the mix to be sure. There we go. Where I'm at. So there's some nice dark skin tone. What do I do if I don't want it to dry on me before I get to it? Because that's our other big problem, isn't it? Mm. Is it? Yes. I don't know about these things. Now, I can take some of my acrylic glazing liquid. I'll just pour it out here. I've plugged up the cap a couple times. And you mix that into the paint you'd like to save a little bit longer. Hmm. That you'd like to not dry on you quite as fast. You don't want to use too much because it'll make it a glaze, but you want to use enough that you can give yourself a little bit of your forgiveness. Right? Or how long it's going to take. I am mixing this in the most inefficient way I possibly could. <laughs> you use a palette knife? Yes. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. So, I don't want the glump. Just mixing that in. And then I'm going to fold in just a little bit of that alizarin, right? Very slowly, a little bit at a time. Very slowly, a little bit at a time. That is going to be my master mix. I've got a shadow value. And I'm going to need a highlight, which I'm going to take my white and just mix the smallest amount of what my skin tone is into it. Three values will start to get you through most of your skin tone work. Add a little more pink into the light value. You can do more uh, yellow ochre, but if you're going to try to put this in highlights, you can also use a little cad yellow. Not that much cad yellow. <laughs> So these are just good to start with, and you may still have to change these as you go. All right? And again, if you're at all worried, what do you do? You take them here, and you're like, oh, if that's too light, guess what you can come do? You make a half tone until you get what you're looking for. So that's how that's done. Now, if you've been doing the quest with me, they covered that. We covered that real early in the beginning back with the flower elf. And um, we actually had worksheets and practice stuff on that. And that is really like what you want to do. So I am going to kind of just keep her here for a second. I'm going to put on stuff so I can see my small spaces up close. I am going to grab the number four round, I think. And I'm going to just put in the base skin tone. The blue is going to show through initially. But we want to build up layers so we are not concerned about that. The other good reason to use the yellow cero paper is that most skin tone will have some type of yellow in it, whether that yellow comes from the brown or um, another brighter source. But definitely, 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 it's a better color to have blending into your mix, if you know what I mean.
And a little bit of arm there coming down this way. And then we're going to hit it with a hairdryer real quick and go second layer. So, oh my gosh, look at that. Look over here. Thank you, Karen. I just saw this uh, scroll by. Oh, well, thank you, for, for Karen, for all the support. We really appreciate it. Christine and all you guys, thank you for com for coming and joining us. And, you know, for for you guys who can't make it to the retreat, we look forward to seeing you at the next event. But uh, thank you for coming and painting with us today. Yes. Oh, was someone asking about the retreat? Oh, Karen was saying she just... She gave us some support in Super Chat, was saying that she's going to miss us at the retreat in March. Oh, we are going to miss you, too. It's always so fun to have you, Karen. But we're going to be doing it more than one time. So there'll be other chances. I, I can only imagine that there will be, uh, there will be some <laughs> special uh, stuff for our patrons coming from that. So we'll probably have some... Well, it's certainly going to let me put my plain air videos together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just I finally have the footage. <laughs> so plain air painting is really wonderful. It's a lot of fun. And once you know how to do it and you know what the tools are and the simple things, it becomes one of the best, best things that you can do because it allows you to paint on vacation. She doesn't want to paint on vacation, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just very carefully... Getting first the that base skin tone in just the just first right now at this stage you can come back and you know you've got your shadow skin tone right you can come in and start to put in and Melinda just said thank you and I'll say thank you back to Melinda thank you it may be Melinda Melinda. A little bit but under I will the say, shadow, and then uh, definitely got some dark skin tone here, and coming under the hand. Could you talk about what plain air paint, plain air painting is? Okay, so it's just a really fun, fancy word for saying I'm gonna go paint outside. Pretty much every impressionist that you've ever left in the museum is a plain air painter, and basically the idea of that is is that instead of sitting in your studio and being a tonalist, right? Like maybe you went out and took some value sketches and you did some stuff and then you're going to paint inside your studio and not looking at your subject. As a plain air painter, you're going to go outside and you're going to paint quick impressions of a landscape. And it's going to let you see that the shadows are not black, that they're like blue and purple mm. and sometimes a weird mauve. And it lets you see the light and it lets you see how the light moves across objects. And it really allows you to start to take it in. If you can master plain air painting, which is the ability to travel around with a small little kit that you can set up really easily and take to almost any location and do a little painting and then bring back to another place where maybe you resolve it a little bit more. You can paint on your vacations. You can paint in your favorite garden spots. You don't have to worry about reference photos. Every moment and opportunity is a chance for you to get your stuff out and just capture that moment. And it's fantastic. And there's almost nothing that looks bad in a plain air painting. Mm. Like I've seen people paint some stuff that I was like, that would be ugly. But then it's like, no, that's not. Like they'll paint an alleyway with an old beat up VW bug in it. And then Carol Marine. And <laughs> she does that a lot. And you'll be like, that should be terrible, but it's amazing. She painted light bulbs. I'm so in love with those light bulbs. That was from her daily painting thing. But that, that's the idea of it. And we have uh, artists that we love online. Uh, Rick Nangolero. He, uh, he does bushcraft painting. Plain air painting, mm -hmm. which is survivalist version. I don't do that. I do a glamping version of this. I'm mama's <laughs> coming comfortable, <laughs> but he like carries the canoe on his back and rows out to a remote island and builds an easel out of twigs and bushes and berries. <laughs> Practically makes his paint out there, paints it, and then comes back. and You can check out his channel. It's I don't know how I don't know why it's not just big and viral and ginormous because it's like such a relaxing joy to watch. This guy just walk around the woods paint stuff <laughs> sorry that was a bit of a bit of a moment there for me i'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow oh my paint got dry <laughs> i was monologuing and my paint got dry <laughs> i'm gonna just put wrong with that some of these little shadows here that i would have 
Now I can always exaggerate these, but it's just nice to get them in at first, right? This one's gonna be really challenging on the inside of the eye. Ugh, probably need a smaller brush for that. And up the forehead. So when you have a face that is got some slight view of the other side, you have to really pay attention to your light source because that's going to be sometimes the, the rest of the face is in detail. And we, we're painting her quite small, so we don't want to paint every detail, but we do have to catch these big highlights and shadows. So when it got away from me, what do I do? I come back with other value right and all i'm doing is trying to get in these base locations of shadow and light and i just use her i'm going to use some more shadow color even though I'm going to be coming back with highlights. Now, on the lips, I'm going to just take my um, basic skin tone and my alizarin crimson. I've got my quinacrid on here if I need to. Like, you might use it a little bit on the eyes and stuff. And I'm going to come put the little lips in very carefully. It's crazy at first, and I'll be coming by with a more detailed brush in a little bit. But we're just talking about where is it? Like how, how far down below the nose is it? That kind of a thing. Mm. Right? These sort of general crazy, you know, uh, laid out moments. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get back from, and I'm going to make gonna sure, take, I'm going to get this for you guys you, so you can kind of see. You're zooming in now to get a picture. Well, just so they can see it, like how I get through it, because it's, it's really challenging to know. Oh my, I'm going to look over here and... Denise Richard is giving us such wonderful, generous support out here in the, Thank in the you, chat. Thank you, Denise. Thank so, you. She's, she's very glad to help out on the Super Chat. So thank you, guys. And, you know, we're going to get some more we're gonna get some more, some more dancing and bubbles going in here. Just yeah, we just, we just ran we out of bubbles. And But I, I could dance. I could go. Psh, uh, uh, uh. Maybe you want me to stop, but uh, I'm still going. I'm still going. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is not the only skin color mix that you could do. Uh, now, like I said, there's that book, 400 of them. And, and I have videos on, on simpler versions of them. Yeah, and you have some on our website. So if you even went out to our website and did a search on theartsherpa.com for that, you'd find lots of them. Lots. Yeah. I'm just coming here and I'm adding a slightly darker value, kind of under the neck. And here. And I'm using my detail brush, and I may get my mister involved just so that I don't have to bring. If I dip my brush in water, what happens is there's a drip that comes down and messes up my whole moisture mix. <laughs> so it can be a little bit challenging. I'm using a smaller brush so that I can capture this. I had a whole year of portrait classes we did with the Big Art Quest. Lately, I've been getting asked, do you have any portrait classes? I'm like, yes, a year of them. We did them for a year. So you're just getting that kind of first little bit in. And we've done this a bit, right? Like we did this a bit with the mother and the daughter. You know, we faced this challenge before, and it's faceable. It's, it's manageable. I'm going to shade the fingers at the bend. I'm going to shade the thumb at the back. We're going to bring a little shade around on the elbow. I'm going to come under here. Even though actually I'm going to hit a highlight, the main shadow of her arm will actually be down the center. Sort of interesting. And then there's a nice little shadow that happens right here at the front of the shoulder. Put those in. 
See, it's weird when you start adding those little values. Like, if it, there's going to be, look, truth. There's a jacked up version of it. This is jacked up for a while. Don't even feel like mm -hmm. crazy about it. Uh, well, you know, this is that under, under layer, the undercoat. What do you call it? Underpainting. 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 And if it doesn't, the you know, if you don't have your underpainting, it all kind of just falls apart. It's it's like in The Incredibles, I am the underpainter. Yes. <laughs> I'm here to make you feel insecure about all your artistic talents. Everything you do artistically is there there to make you feel insecure about. The underpainting. I think that's that's just, you know. Mm, Got to wash that one out. I'm looking for like little brushes that I like to use for my portrait painting because it's interesting. I'm going to stay between the four and the this. Now I'm going to start to get some highlights here. So I have this skin. Maybe I'll come in, uh, oh, there, that's right. I have this nice little highlight that I've got here. Pull in some alizarin to it. And if I need to get into my glazing medium, I'm going to now. So where do we have some highlight? We have one on the forehead over the brow. Right? Comes down around the temple. Catches the top of the cheek, right? Catches the chin a little bit. Maybe a bit right here. Going across the top of the chest. Definitely top of the shoulder. You know, I want to say thank you to all of the Sherpettes. It's yes. So, and to, to Lydia and to Sheila and Christine and to Linda and Shirley and Denise and Mona and Mary. And it's like romp room up here. I just want to say thank you to everybody because it's not just the people who can give on Super Chat. It's everybody. It and is. I, it takes everyone to show up and everybody to participate. It, it's everyone that makes a community. Yeah. And thank you, guys. We really appreciate you coming and joining us. Just, yeah. Those likes and comments, those encouraging words. Those have a tremendous value. Mm. So I'm just finding the spots and then, you know, getting their values a little bit softer. All right, come under here. It's still kind of a shadow color, but it's a little bit softer. Now we're just going to build this up. And where we need to, soften it. Right? It's weird. It's like uh, building a skeleton face. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's kind of what you're doing, right? I'm going to get some of my uh, dark value. I'm going to do some crazy stuff here. So I'm going to get a little of my brown and maybe my black. And uh, definitely my glaze. I like to use glazing medium when I'm doing any of this work because it allows me to do transparent mixes. This is a number one round detail brush. Even so, I still have to work very delicately mm. to capture anything that I've got going on here, right? I'm going to pull some of that in now. Just touching some of those little lashes in. Everything always looks a little crazy till the eyebrows are in. And let's get kind of shadow that's in between the lips. Maybe there's a little bit of this dark shadow here, but not too much. And we're starting to see, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Little touches. It's a pain. Fabric's gonna be super easy compared to this. Yeah? Yeah. I've got, but these step-by-steps step will really help you guys. I didn't know. I zoomed in on the on the on the picture-in-picture picture to kind of help. Color maybe. 
little, you know, it's not perfect color accuracy between the printout, the reference, and what you're doing, and the live camera, but you guys, you know. Got the basic gist of it. This is, this is, you know, get close. It does help. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to make the top lip get smaller really on the side to the cheek. It's going to come here and pull down. And then the bottom lip, a little bit lighter than the top lip. And I will use my glazing medium. And if I have to get this down to like a very detailed point, and if I have to tap it in. Right, I will. And it generally takes a couple of touches between those things to get a slightly open mouth. There's nothing just harder than a slightly open mouth, man. It is challenging to the nth degree. Come here and glaze a little shadow right there. Deepen that little shadow here where it's going to be into the hair. And I'll take that back into the hair because I know that I need to. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of these darker values. And I'm going to come here and... There we go. Start to create some shadow near, like under the hand. It's a big deal. At the corner of the arm here. Down the arm. Under the thumb. And definitely, definitely under the forefinger. All right. Sometime I like to catch the top of the thumb. We'll see how that goes. A little bit maybe there. Definitely some right here and right here. Denise really likes the face on your lady. Thank you, How's Denise. It's so it's just it's just a it's just like attrition, man. It's just <laughs> little bits. <laughs> right? It's little bits, and that's why this stuff takes a while. Layers. Layers. But if you're willing to stay in for the layers, you can get anywhere you need to get. Let's get this nose working. So what do we need to pay attention to? We've got some highlights through here we've got to deal with, right? And along the bridge. Let's get those. So I've got this highly highlighted. Let me make sure that all my brush, my detail brush is completely rinsed out. And I'm even going to use my finger to sort of hold some extra paint. See how I'm doing? I'm going to yeah. come along here, inside ridge of the nose, along the bridge. A little bit at the tip, and down through the nostril. It's hard. If you're like, man, this is hard, yep. I am using a number one round. Any number detail, one. if you okay. don't have this, man, I would even suggest a toothpick. A toothpick? If a toothpick is necessary, toothpick it up. I see. You know, if you need a toothpick, get a toothpick. I'm going to get some of my shadow color coming left. Glaze into it. I'm going to come here and... A little bit of shadow there, and but also there's a little bit of shadow under the nostrils, and that's an interesting thing. I'm going to add some black to it. I've got to be able to see it. Let's see if we can get this tap, 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 just a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Tapping is important, man. Mm -hmm. Under the lip, tap a little shadow. All right. 
There's a bit of one that comes down from that shadow on the nose down that's going to be like her um, kind of little jowls there. And if you've ever contoured just a bit, tap, 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 tap. It's so light. It's so minor right here. You know where they are if you've ever contoured. <laughs> where those shadows kind of have to go, don't they? Yeah. And come back here on the lid. Now here's my little trick. I'm gonna get some Quinn and some glaze. I do this a lot. I'm gonna get the extra off. I just want enough to have a pink, pink zen, zen to it. And it's hard to find that balance, right? Because if it's too pink, it's too much. But if it's not pink enough, you won't see it at all. I'm gonna pink this a bit. And come here again at the top of the lip. And I'm going to try to glaze out a bit of a blush. Just a bit here. Not a lot, but I just want to kind of talk about a pinkness at the top of her cheek, maybe a little bit under her eye and stuff here. So we're getting there, guys. It's just, again, it's a slow journey. It's little like the brushes. Formation of a star. Right. Slowly comes together and layer and layer and layer. Yeah, it's about that fast. Boom! All of a sudden, something <laughs> cool happens. It's about as fast as that, right? <laughs> hey. And I know John is having to work to film around me, and I'm super sorry really. for that. No, it's uh, we, we've got things laid out, so things are pretty good. And pretty. I'm going get, to get the bottom lip color, right? If I need to get some wine into it, I will. Going to pull. Oh, this is really hard. So I'm going to get this down to the smallest point that I can get. I'm going to touch a little bit of a highlight there. Mm. Now, there's a good little line of conversation coming up in here. Okay. So if your hands were not super steady and you were nervous about getting in and doing this, are there any tools or techniques that would help make it so that you might be able to get some of these details a little easier? So. What you can see, and where the glass is right, you can do. Make sure you have some type of magnification. So you're not trying to guess where the paint's going. Zoom in, get jewelry loops, get a magnifying embroidery hoopy thing. Just whatever you can to see your subject better, right? Have glazed, have everything there. If you're having trouble studying your hands, you can use a tool called a mall stick or a canvas bridge. These, uh, one is a stick with kind of like a sock-like thing at the end that you can rest against your canvas, kind of hold your hand steady. Another one sort of clips and slides along the canvas and you can, you can put it right here and just really rest your hand, plant your hand, and therefore steady your face. Does that make sense? It, it does. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sometimes I say this, I'm like, I don't know, that sounds crazy, but it is true. So those are some things that you can do. I'm going to get my mid-skin tone. And I put a lot of glaze on it. And I'm doing this because I kind of want to soften that shadow a bit. I want it there. I just want it to be a little bit softer. You guys see what I'm doing? I see the softened shadow. Just a little bit softened. There, just softened. We don't want to lose it. We need it. For sure we need it. We do? Yeah, the shadow, I mean, yeah, we need a shadow, but we just want to soften. I'll make a highlight above my lip. This one is challenging, but I've got to find it. I'm highlighting above the lip. And I'm rinsing out, and I'm going to soften that. And if I need to get a little bit of the shadow again, get my glaze involved and tap it in. Shadow under the nose, little shadow on that far side. So what I'm always balancing is the shading to the far side of the face, right? Mm. And get a little of my white on here.
little bit on the tip, a little bit on the nostril, more under the brow, maybe. bit on the just trying to create some big highlights but they may be a step too big so I just keep at it until I get it mid-tone So Betty asks a really good question. Hi, Betty. She was wanting to know if there's any place that you can go to get acrylic samples. And I was just remembering that a lot of the local art stores where I was just getting an email that are they're telling me that they're doing demo days. And a mm -hmm. lot of the paint manufacturers, especially this time of year, are setting up demo days at local paint stores. So if you're interested in learning about paints and trying them out and sometimes even getting some samples, call your local art store and find out when they're going to be hosting a demo day for your paint manufacturer of your choice. Most of them will have those. They really will. And um, my favorites are uh, uh, Royal Talon. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see Sunlier anywhere, if you see Pierre from Sunlier anywhere, just drop everything <laughs> just... you're doing and go see that. Uh, if you see Pierre from Sunlier, just drop everything you're doing and go see that. Uh, Golden's demos are amazing. Come with samples. Holbein's got some good demo work that they do. Uh, Michael Harding Oils. If Even if you don't paint oils, just stop. If he's there to talk about paint, stop everything you're doing and go to that talk. Mm. You know, there's definitely some companies that do some great, great stuff. And they give samples. And the reason they give samples is they like you to, you know, buy their stuff. And they know sometimes it's easier to buy once you try. Yeah, they want you to, to understand what the difference is, hand in hand. That's why those demo days exist. And they're so, fantastic. Yeah, I, I highly suggest them. And such, I brought them up for you guys to talk about. <laughs> uh, I need more, like, lower lip, but light color. Ugh, that's what's happening. So, my glasses are great for up close, but they're just junk for the mixes <laughs> over here. Maybe I switch back to the blues. I don't know. Getting used to everything. All right. There we go. On my finger. On there. Your test finger. Yeah. That's what I do. I'm sorry I'm in your way, babe. You're not. I has angles. There we go. And then just a little tiny. See if I can get it now. I'm trying to shade in. So I want to shade this back corner a little bit, you know? Yeah. And underneath and into the back corner, but still leave a nice reflection. I may just have to come back with one to get it perfect. So there, her lips are a little more red. Oh, finally. Jeez. Jeez Louise. All right. Wish me luck. I wish you luck. I'm just tapping in the smallest amount because at this point, it's just very little does a lot. I'm just making sure that's there. And I feel like I've got that. <laughs> yeah? Yes. <gasps> Ah, it's done. Something in She lines. looks good there. I really like that. There we go. <sighs> because you did it, I approve. Huh? Because you were just waiting for my approval, I give it. <laughs> Thank you. You were just, I know you were just waiting for that. Yes, yes, my whole life. Just, just what will happen until that happens, right? Yep. All right, I'm going to take a little of my Cad Red and my Alizarin. I'm going to take these crazy glasses off for a second. I'm just going to do, you know, the sort of, this is my base. This is my beginning. Right? 
Maybe even deeper than that. Maybe go almost pure alizarin. And just paint this all in now. Mm -hmm. And I so like this red. I so like this red. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just going to get a beautiful red, gorgeous gown in there blowing in the cold, cold wind. The hair I'm super looking forward to. Super looking forward to the hair. Like, the whole thing for me is going to be, like, at the hair. Yeah? Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> I don't want to put them all the way on. Now, you have some different hairstyles available on your website as well, don't yes. you? Yes. Yeah, tons, tons. A Even different hair colors. You have some, you have some, like, if so if you were curious about, like, say, skin tones or, like, those recipes, you could go out to our website and find a bunch of those, huh? Yes, you could. Now, Chris, uh, Christina asked a really interesting question. Um, does the color mixing pigment guides for skin tones work the same in oil as they do in acrylic? Yes, and very often those books will, uh, and watercolor and all of it. The difference with watercolors generally is that, you know, the paper is white. Um, but as long as you know you're factoring that in, it'll <laughs> be the same. So uh, they'll say for oil, for acrylic, for different painting things, because the formulas are the same. And you may have some different processes on how you get them into your painting. But the formulas are the same. I wonder how, how many questers, do have. if you're a quester, if you're on the Big Art Quest fairy tale, shout us, shout us out in the chat and let us know you're here. Oh, for sure. Right? Um, because, you know, you guys have been coming through this with me forever. How long was that? Forever. So I'm just using, oh, this is a number four cat's tongue. And I picked it up because it was here. Not because it was like some specific super brush for which uh -huh. this entire painting depends. You know, as you do. But now I'm using it, so it's here. And, you know, it has some nice aspects because it's got all these different edges that I can work so I can get a lot done very easily. Yeah? Yeah. That's all it is. Sometimes I will wipe off a brush if I know I've gotten paint up the ferrule and up the handle. I don't want it to drop down on my piece. Somewhat of a relief, isn't this? Mm -hmm. Look, and already with the red, there's this great, wonderful kind of feeling in, in the canvas. In fact, I'm not going to add any snow or splatter any snow. Because I didn't work that hard on her face to have one little spot of snow mess the whole thing up. <laughs> so the only way I would splatter this is I would mask out her face. <laughs> And then hand put a snowflake where I felt it went. <laughs> but I would not, for any reason, do otherwise. I'm going to get into my number four round. And I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt umber and my base skin cone. And that's really going to be her skin tone for under the dress because everything's under shadow here, right? Yes. So yes, we do see just a smidge of skin tone under the dress. Just a smidge. But that, that skin tone is 100% about shadow. That makes sense. And now some of my black for the boots.
Just quietly painting this in. Sometimes you'll see me roll my brush to get more control over the paint that's on it. Huh. I'm just trying to load it to a tip, to an edge, to a location, other than where it's like inclined to want to be. Ah. Oop. Too much down. I'm dipping water and I'm thinning my paint. For her hair, I'm probably going to use fluid black. And I'm going to use our our master mix maybe to do some haloing around it. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really gorgeous. It's going to be like the best curly hair ever. Hang in for the curly hair. It's what you're really here for. Even if you didn't know that's what you're here for. Didn't know it, but you're here for it. Yeah, you didn't know it, but you are. You are here for it. I'm just putting my boots in. And that's what we're doing. We're just getting boots in. Now, those black lines, if I just leave them like that, they're kind of a problem. But I do want them there for the shadow. I'm going to come back tapping up and down, kind of soften them into the space. Might even grab some brown and some black, a glazy medium. Here's a big issue about her. If you've got any of your master mix left, grab it. Number one thing you can do to improve your art is remember to cast a shadow. And you can soften this if you want to. You can use our softing techniques. You need a shadow under her. You know, I'm holding her at a weird angle, but I just want to make it work for me. Oh, that's all right. I'll get a little bit of my white paint. And I'll come back and add some highlights here of snow. And that should help. Underneath her, you want to see some discoloration. You want to see... We've got that under her. That's lovely, always. Mm. Woohoo! I'm gonna go ahead and take a little more of my skin tone while I'm at it. Touch up any thin areas I feel that I have. And that just means like places where the mid range of skin is, and I would just wanna. know feel good or better about what I've got going on there a little highlight above the hand and on the arm here top of this maybe at the top of the elbow is always nice Cross that back there because that is 
where the light's coming from. And I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and a smidge of white. A little reflection on the boot. The beginning is a one. So kind of like a little bit of a highlight there. And one at the top of the boot right here. Top of the boot there. That's just the blue and the white. Maybe at the back of the boot there. Go ahead and use my finger palette. Rinsing <laughs> <laughs> out. A little bit right there, kissing up there, just a smidge. You just want to show that there's some reflection on her boots. I'm going to take a little bit of my shadow skin tone color and just come here to the leg and towards the back, just to kind of imply a little skin tone there. And I am going to want to give a little bit of a more defined shadow here between the two leg spaces. You guys see that? Yeah. A little mix of my main skin tone and my first shadow skin tone. And. What I'm having happen is my pain is lifting, so I'm going to hit this with a hairdryer real quick and fix okay. it. Okay. So, yeah, if your uh, paint is as you're, if you're when you're painting and uh, the layers start to stick together, I'll let Cinnamon explain. Be back. Yeah, so what happens is there's these different um, stages of the paint binding, and there's this sort of mid-tack where it's just not quite bound enough to the layer beneath it. I'll see if I can show you one. See? Underbinding. Mm. That's what I'm always talking about. And that's just too much water too soon into the paint. So you dry it. Just give it a quick dry off. And that's what she's doing there. Let it have a rest and a think about what it's done. <laughs> Sorry. I love that. I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone and my cad red together. And I'm going to come across the front of her dress right here. My number four still. And steady. So you know coffee? Yeah. That's what happens. So quinacridone red and cad red medium make a really spectacular and unique color. And I like to use it. It is pretty special in my opinion. And start to see it and it's going to make her really pop from her background mm -hmm. and she should start to finally be starting to come together 
So again, on the second leg, I'm going to very carefully try to come in with a little bit of the shadow skin tone and brown, and hopefully it will be enough to cover Right, so we got that there. Now we want a little bit of black to come up from this leg and just be blended softly. And I'm doing that by tapping my brush up and down. And then I'm gonna come and get some of my Shadow and my main skin mix. There we go. Now we have two legs. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Such a relief. And I can add just a highlight to the front of that leg right there. Bring it up to the dress. And then it'll feel like, oh yeah, she's got whole legs. All legs are happening. Do we have any questions as we're going? Let's see here. We're wrapping up actually pretty quickly. Yeah, they see that red looks from really good. Out. We're almost done. We'll be done pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably pretty good. I'm sure you're tired, but then after editing for what, a bazillion de hours yesterday? I, I had a little editing session yesterday. We found that it takes us a lot longer to do shorter videos. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to treat myself to some fresh paint, if y'all right. don't mind. You can do that. So as you're painting in longer sessions, if you're not painting on a stay wet palette, your paint will start to gum up and it just doesn't perform as well. And it's just better in my opinion to at some point either run a stay wet palette or to, to put out fresh paint. So I'm gonna work on the dress for a bit. I'm gonna put out a Lizarin Crimson. Yeah. I'm going to put, put out Cad Red. I'm going to put out Quinacridone Magenta. I may still put out some Cad Yellow. A little bit. I'll put out some Black and some Titanium White. And I'm going to start to think about how that's going to go out. So yeah, the fresh paint sometimes is super, super helpful. It just really is. It, it does a lot for me in the, I don't know where John is. <laughs> He's just got somewhere so I'm going to be like, all right. Hello, I teach art on YouTube live and this is paint and my stun hands is gone and I don't know where he went, but I'm sure. He had to go. All right, so let's go over the colors again. Alizarin Crimson, Cad Red Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Yellow Medium. Uh, this happens to be Carbon Black, but Mars Black would be fine and Titanium White. John, still not here. Um, hmm. I guess another color I could put out. <laughs> Panicking now. Oh, you were just gone a really long time. <laughs> so I was like starting to panic. I'll put out my my base color mix for my background because I'm going to need a little bit of her hair. Yeah. Which is my burnt umber in my phthalo blue. And I will go ahead and mix that up. You were gone. What? You were gone. So I was long. gone. So were you okay? Long. No. What happened? It was freaking me out. You were like, like we were just on the palette too long. You like I started to <laughs> talk with the paint and Hello? all kinds of stuff. It was just bad. Is anyone there out there? I think you were just punishing me for all the times I hair dry too long. Oh, I hadn't um, thought about that. I could do that. I'm going to there. use this not only as um, kind of like a special shading on her hair, but also as um, shadows in her uh, dress. Hmm. So let's just real quick let's find let's find all the shadows real fast, okay? So we're going to take this and our alizarin crimson. This is the burnt sienna, the phthalo blue, and the alizarin crimson. And we're going to get a very deep, almost plum color. 
going to come along her waist. I'm going to add that shadow. Come inside her bust. And this is going to be really important because this really kind of defines her chest. So we want to definitely have that shadow there, don't we? A little bit under here. And then also under this arm. If you're going to want to have the roll on her dress, you're going to need to have that shadow talked about as well. Mm. And yeah. Patty's just sent some love out for the studio assistant Twix. Thank oh, you, Patty. Oh, Twix says thank you, Patty. Twix is a spoiled dog. Twix is. Just totally spoiled as she sits down here on my feet. She has beds around the house. <laughs> She just works through whoever she thinks she can get food from that day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little shadow here. All right, I've got a little shadow here that I want to talk about. And I can always come back, right, with highlights. But shadows, it's important to get them in because they start to determine the shape of the fabric. A little shadow there. There's a really gorgeous set of them coming down here. I'm going to get my brush into the water and get a little more of this together. I'm going to make a bunch of these little shadows. This is wonderful because what this does is this comes around down. We have a bit of this. They have them put a shadow in, you start to see the folds of the fabric. I do. And here I, we can almost find her leg. I can see the fold. But bring one of the curved folds up. This is where the fabric kind of has a little curvaceous fold. And it's important to be able to paint those because most fabric will do that. It will give you a curvy fold. And another one down. Now there's a bunch of wonderful shadow right here. But what you're basically seeing is it's going to come up like this. And then there's one that kind of happens right here. Look at that. Already we have some folds and flow over fabric. Take it as far as you want. Yeah? Yep. It's not going to hurt you. It's just about where you want to see it go. And again, I'm going to have these little pictures up on the website. So if you've never done one of these big monster paintings before, they will help. You guys, sometimes what happens in the lessons is you'll get lost in the lesson, but you can find your way through the step-by-step. Hello. <laughs> Don't worry about taking it. <laughs> I didn't realize that I still had the uh, picture picture up on you. I was over here trying to find out my uh, chat's kind of going in and, away, in, in and out. It's acting all funkety. Is the video going in and out or just the chat? No, just, just my chat. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. It's acting all funkety on me. I'll fix it. I'm going to come here and hit everything with maybe a little coat of alizarin. And the reason I feel very comfortable hitting it with alizarin is alizarin is very transparent. So it will create um, some nice smoothing that you will enjoy. And some depth. Uh, if you painted Santa, the red Santa, you know exactly what I mean. I'm going to tip her to the side just real quick because I want to get a kind of like 
Nice long flowing stroke here. Mm. Lovely. A lizard and crimson and a little bit of my, I'm not lizard and crimson, uh, quidacrid and magenta and a little bit of my cad red medium. Again. And then where I think that there's highlights, I'm going to begin to use this to talk about them. Right here. I'm going to blend. Right there. And maybe a little bit of one down. I'm like right across here. And what you're going to see real fast is that these are very transparent little glazes of color. Mm. And that kind of starts to pull her dress in from where she's, where it's flowing from. So you'll still have the deep shadows, but these start to pull some stuff up. Just a little bit. Uh oh, gave her a little bit more bust than I intended, but okay. She's got a boob job. Happens. <laughs> She's an adult. She can make choices. So I'm just enforcing those things. Yep. Those decisions that we made about the fabric folds we felt we wanted to talk about. See how that softens it out and lets you see some of the pops? Yeah. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my CAD red. And come right there. You're freezing? I'm finally comfortable. I'm going to add a highlight to the front of her bust there. I'm going to come here and maybe add another one here along that edge. And you can see that kind of pulls her chest line out. I'm staying warm by candlelight. And she's hot underneath all of the <laughs> lights in the studio. Switch. <laughs> Adding a little bit of the bright right at the back. And remember, you can catch some of these little wrinkles with that cat red. See how we're doing? Yeah. Picking some highlights up. There we go, a little bit of highlight down there. And that's where the dress starts to come from. There we go. And I just step back every once in a while and just take kind of a look, right? There's a little highlight there. A 
can always blend it with a little bit of Quinac or Dal Magenta. We have a drip. It is a blowing. Mm -hmm. We have a drip. It is a blowing. A little highlight right there. By the time her hair comes in, it's going to be so fun. It looks like you're getting closer. I am. I'm like, again, as soon as I get these little folds and fabrics in, she's going to be like, boom. Coming out of the background. There we go. You guys see that? See where we got that? Little bits, caught the folds, caught those little informational things. Didn't even use the yellow. So. I'll try this and see if I like it, or if I'm not liking it, I will go into the white. And come here and add some of these kind of slightly oranger highlights. They were noticing that you flared her hips. Flared the dress at the hips a little more. I than know. Your... I give my girls some badonka donk. I'm like, it's a whole thing. <laughs> All right, just some extra little flare, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this part is definitely more challenging. I'm going to take my Cad Red and my Quinacridone and a half to half mix, and I'm going to get a very light value. For all intents and purposes, this is almost white. And we are going to. Capture some of that on this dress. These are sort of like the velvet kind of part of the reflection, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. She has the movie theater dress. She does. I need velvet. to give her just some reflections here and there about it. Not too much. You can get really out of hand real fast. <laughs> you really can. <laughs> There we go. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty great. We learned a little bit more about skin tones, yeah. painting faces, how to do fabric, all that craziness. About deserts in Canada. <laughs> Canadian deserts. <laughs> Them Canadian deserts. Again, I'll put these little steps up into the listing so you can kind of get these up close little these pictures yeah sometimes they can help they can sometimes they can now i need to find my ultimate detail brush the ultimate detail brush which hopefully i'd like my monogram liner is it it's not the one around your neck no I will. <laughs> <laughs> where is that brush you're wearing it sherpa <laughs> goof <laughs> you big goof. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of my water. I'm going to come here and I'm going to thin on my number one monogram liner mm. some paint. And I'm also going to put this on. What are we doing now? Her hair. Oh, okay. I'll zoom in on the hair. 
All right, we're thinning it and rolling it out, making sure it doesn't have any weird hidden anything, anything, anything. And I'm going to come to these edges, these little halos. Because we're going to give her, you know how like when somebody has like really dark hair, they have that like crazy, crazy almost like halo to it in the curls. That's how we're going to get that. Hmm. It's a bit fussy, I know. We are not painting every single strand, I promise. We are, however, painting some of the strands in a very detailed way. And then after that, we're going to paint just... You see how I'm just working this? It's going to take a minute. So just hang in with me, guys. We're okay, but this is all we're doing now. It's hair. That's okay. It's just, it, it, hair's one of those things that grows on you. Your dad jokes are the best. Just gotta give it time. I just find these little curls back here. When I come back and do the same thing with the black paint, it is gonna blow your mind what it does. Or it should. If it doesn't, that'll be interesting too. Find these little hairs. See, I'm finding them. Mm -hmm. It's telling this like crazy little story. Let's uh, run some little hair that's going to come down. Maybe like here. Exaggerate what you see, by the way. One little strand at a time. In fact, think the max. That's how exaggerated this hair needs to be. The max exaggerated. For the three people that watch MTV liquid television and know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's how much we're going to be exaggerating her hair, though. Liquid television. Liquid. Now, see, the thing is, I don't need to do everything. I'm just doing these little bits. It would be at the edge. Catching light. It's probably going to get out of hand on me in about a second. Because hmm. that's, that's how okay. I am. You okay, babe? Is everyone okay? Yeah, just stretching, popping my knees. <laughs> oh, baby, I'm so That's sorry. probably what you're hearing. <laughs> you can kind of see how we're going to be putting that in. It's going to be a thing. She's got some magic hair, right? Now, let's see here. Michelle was asking, how stiff is the brush that you're using? So this is a Ruby Satin number one monogram liner. I put it in the set with my two inch cutter, that ultimate varnish blender that I have in this because these brushes are like weirdly pricey brushes, but that when you can have them, it's nice to have them because they do this. I'm getting support from Patty for my dad joke. Did you? No, <laughs> don't support the dad joke, Patty. <laughs> I didn't know where I'm at. We live it every day. <sighs> Thank you, Patty. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you for painting these. Thank you for sharing them online and tagging me so I can see what you did. Mm -hmm. I, I read so many nice things every day. Now, I want to tell everyone, because some folks know this, some folks don't, but if you go to our website, theartsherpa.com, or check in the link in the description down below, and you'll find a project page for each video we've done. Now, on that project page, it has the traceable, right? Mm -hmm. 
as the list of materials, the reference image oftentimes. Uh, it has that cool boat, boat meter, so you can vote on how difficult you thought this was. Yeah, you can be like, this lady was crazy. I just saw her on YouTube. She had a weird hat and pink hair. So I thought I'd watch her, and she said this was like a one hoot, but she was mad. It was a 50 hoot. <laughs> Now, but one of the things that people don't know is that you can actually upload your picture right at the bottom of that page. Yeah. And what I tell you, there's some really cool stuff coming on the website. So as you guys start uploading and sharing your photos on our website, we're going to be able to do cooler and cooler stuff with that. So there's some not so secret, secret stuff. That's right. I'm giving her some hair. Y'all see how much hair she's getting? You're framing it in. Well, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about like, you know, how do I want it to be? And so that's the blue. I think that's, I, if I need more blue, I can come back, right? Is that phthalo blue? That is burnt umber and phthalo blue. It's basically the whole, the color we did the whole thing over. This would the work. The burnt umber. So how this works, guys, is that um, if, if this were all a very sunny picture, mm -hmm and we were doing it all in a particular run of oranges, that would be the halo on the hair. It would be. Yeah. Oh, I can get it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna put out some black paint. They're, everyone, they're digging your hat. They like oh, the hat. Oh, thank you. That hat was a, that was a gift from a, from a sure pet Angie. Just really appreciated too. There's just, I just appreciate you guys so much. You have no idea. It's just the thoughtfulness is just amazing in our community. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my black. You are? And I'm going to save myself some detail work. I'm not going to paint exactly at her. I'm going to leave some room on her hairline, right? Mm-hmm. But where I know I'm, I have to have a solid mass of hair, I'm going to paint this in. So when I come back with my detail brush, I am not here into the next millennium. It is okay. Angie's here. Angie's here? Yes. So she's getting to see her hat in action? She, she is. She's getting to see her handiwork on your head. Is Tara as, here so she can see her necklace? As you do your handiwork. I love that. I, I just appreciate it. I have not seen Terry, but I know that Terry sees these on the replay. She's a time traveler. So when she's not enjoying her... Uh, wow. Her wow. Yeah. It's a, I'm just, I'm really, I really like what you're doing with the brush there. You're just really working on the tip of it. I was actually kind of distracted by how you're yeah, just sort just of. working the tip. <laughs> I've got those little halos. I may have to come back and halo some more. See, I have to stay very tuned in to what you're doing because that little brush moves fast. It does. And I never know which, but uh, I didn't see Terry over here. I'm taking a quick look if I see. So fun, isn't it? But L.A. would like to say that we are grateful for all that you do, Cinnamon. So thank you. We're grateful for you guys, so thank you. As we said, without you, we would just be a couple of weirdos alone making videos. <laughs> it would be weird, too. People would be like, <laughs> we would still be doing it. But Yeah. No, it would still happen. Because we started out, nobody was watching, so right. we know we <laughs> and I'm always like touched that anybody ever watches. I am. You, you give us direction. Anybody? I, huh? I would say they give us the direction. Because yeah. you know, when we started, we had an idea. But really, since then, it's been responding to what you guys say. Exactly. So see how I use my brush to do a whole bunch of work? I see that. Now I can come back with my detail brush and get fussy with it. Is that da -da, what they... da -da, da -da, da -da. Oh, get fussy with it. Da -da. <laughs> now it looks like some weird kind of like handmaid's tail thing is going on here, but I'm going to fix it. <laughs> She's got a hood. Like, <laughs> it's like a hair hood. Shoo. Now, her little eyelashes are going to go. You're going to have to like. I'm going to low them, aren't you? And put those back in. Yep. See, I, I, now I'll I'm adding sound effects. There. I see this and I'm all... Uh, we're not close enough. This is a very stressful time. Too close. Too close. Too close. Okay, there you go. 
I can I can zoom in closer than the camera is framed away from minimum focus distance. So when you're doing this part close to her face and you're catching her uh, what you've painted, you want to be as careful as you can because you can lose a lot of the work. And I'm gonna really rest on my canvas for a minute, which is gonna cause John some trouble. But I need no, to. Did. I'm good. Okay, thank you, babe. Now, if you don't want to rest your hand on your surface, bridge. A bridge. <laughs> that's, that's over troubled water. <laughs> it will bring you home. It's a bridge. Is it? Anyways, um, I'm sorry. Now. We come around our little hairline. Bringing that back over. See how I did? Whoop, I do. Whoop. I see some. What are you doing over there? Getting paint. Oh, you just shh, 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 you're fast. Yeah, you got to be just super careful with what you're doing right now. Lovely little detail brush. Now, there was a question that came by here, and I caught some of it because it was chat's pretty clipping along here today. Um, but what it came down to was in student paints, uh, where do you get, I think it was, quina this, this question was quinacridone, and do they have quinacridones and are all student paints the same because the, these mm -mm. names seem to be mm -mm. weird? Could you all just touch on that? have a lot of different qualities to them, uh, um, a lot of different brands, a lot of different qualities, different colors. Most of them do have quinacridone. Um, in my Facebook group, I have a file. If you go in the file, if you haven't been in the file section of the Facebook group, you missed a whole bunch of stuff. How to price art, how to be safe online, you know, just anything you need to do. We have like helplines all over the world. Like we have stuff in there. Right, like how to recover your account if Facebook goes crazy, and I have in there all the paint colors that I uh, use in every acrylic paint company, and then on some of them I have who makes what. Do you? And then I I share the brands that I've tested and personally recommend as being a good brand, and and they're and they're all price ranges. Plus, I just did an artist loft level one uh, uh, project where if you got the doorbuster deal that they've got going on right now, which is like a, an easel, a palette, the paint, the brushes and a canvas for $24.99. Huh. Uh, we did a whole video on like how you could get a winter floral out of that painting. That is good. Remind me about that after the show. I've got some ideas on what we can do with some of that stuff. Okay, cool. I <laughs> will. <laughs> we're always working on we're things. We're always working. Some we're of those like resources. That lady from uh, Monsters Inc. Always watching. Yeah, you just you just gave me a you listed some resources that I think we can do something with. What are you doing? I'm adding uh, her little eyelashes here. Across oh, the back. you're you're putting some yeah. some oh, um, what do they call that? Uh, uh, edge lighting. Yes. <laughs> edge lighting her lashes. <laughs> <laughs> it got real on me there. That's right. pretty cool, though. It's like. Now we're going to get through here and start to do these little. Hairs. The little hairs. And so it is a lot harder to paint it in with a small brush, but sometimes on these edges, I need the small brush. To do the types of lines and like there's no way I could have gotten those lashes with any other brush that I own. This is just my baby for the lines. Monogram liners are really cool. Now even with your kind of backlit, you do want to put some of your pure black hair because you're you're not trying to say that she that her hair suddenly turns blue. You're just saying that there's so much light shining through it that it has a bit of that blue cast to it. Yeah, it's it's especially challenging to give uh, black objects depth and mm -hmm. uh, complexity because they naturally really they want to resist it. Suck all the light out of the room. It's like the color was made to do that. <laughs> there we go. First little tendril hair flying out. Hmm. It's We're a runaway. Okay. We're doing okay. 
maybe. That's good. Is she looking like she's got some wild hair, guys? Oh, yeah. She free spirit. So again, if you like this, we did uh, 10 others. There's one more coming. She's going to be our master opus of the whole year. Is she? Yeah. She's going to be wild. That we're going to hopefully finish before my birthday? No, we're not. Oh. <laughs> like, Abandoned. I don't even lie to you about it anymore. Year, we're not going to make it. Here. <laughs> She's probably going to get wound up in January. We've got a oh, lot yeah. going on right now. So she's going to get, the Oya is going to get finished in January. But we're doing them. But yeah, no, I said I would, so I'm going to. I'm still, I like the um, jellyfish girl. Yeah, Elfish. She was Elfish. So yeah, I keep, I, yeah, that was pretty cool. So can you see how, like, now we're, like, getting those little hairs and. And how she's happening. Diane was saying that she's got a share vibe to her. I can see that with the big hair. If I could Shh. do my thumb. Yeah, she does. I agree. Sorry. I apologize. I shouldn't sing, but I do. Because singing makes me happy. I just don't want to do it for a living. I do this for a living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is perfectly appropriate. It is a good use of the Sherpa's time. It is a very good use. But that doesn't mean I don't sing. I think it's ridiculous. You do sing. To have to be good enough to be professional at something to do it. That's the weirdest metric of like, why you should do an activity. If you're good enough to make a living at it, that's when you're allowed to do it. But don't make a living at it because it's super competitive and you'll starve to death. Sound that's, familiar to anybody? Sounds like everything I've ever done. Mm-hmm. You guys see the full max about her hair? Yeah. Well, full max. I got it. Yeah. Anybody else get it? Anybody? Anyone? We did Ren and Stimpy. The max didn't get the votes. <laughs> Daria didn't either. And now Kappa's on the way. <laughs> they might suddenly decide that liquid television was intended for children. So. Oh my gosh. That would be like. <sighs> yeah, I didn't care. Just anything. I'm. I did that with fan art. I've just well, marked as intended for children. I've just given up. In all fairness, um, MTV was pushing the boundary of what was acceptable television at that time when they were airing that. Yeah. No. Which like was. You watch Beavis and Butthead now. You're like, this is inappropriate. Yeah. That's why all that ran on I late night. I would never let my kids watch that. I'd let them watch South Park before I let them watch this. <laughs> oh, my. I have to say, the first time I shared South Park, shared a South Park episode. Well, you shared the very first one. Well, yeah, that was you rough. You shared where it came from. Oh, and it was... It was it, very... It took them years to get back to that edgy place. <laughs> <laughs> the very... Yeah. They had I, to build we, up a fan base to protect them. <laughs> yep. Yep. I would have to say it was it was definitely edge humor when it was first out. What do you guys think? Are you pretty pleased with her? I love the way her hair came. That's just... It's got that glowiness to it. This part is here, hard right here. That's why I'm breathing. I'm kind of trying to hold my <sighs> core steady and steady my body. And we're all holding our breath too. Yeah, are you? <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There we go. Oh. <sighs> 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 there we go. You know, you know what this this could use? Signature. I, oh, I, we could put another person standing next to her. Her daughter or something. Talking, maybe a full fox. Maybe. <laughs> just. We we got another couple hours to kill. <laughs> so my two cents on this is that's how you get there. This is amazing. 
Uh, uh, Blessings that are on YouTube. By giving my wife a hard time aside, I really like this. Really? What size is this? This is an 11 by 14. Um, So the Big Art Quest was something I started in 2016 to sort of help people who didn't like go to art school or have a mom who was an artist and weren't just inducted into the world of art to be able to go into the art store and see what was on the shelves and be like, oh, I know what all this stuff is or I know what I want to buy today or I know what these techniques are. I wanted to be able to walk into any workshop and be able to just take the workshop and feel confident that they understood what was going on. And so that was really fun, but it was kind of mayhem. And then the next year we did About Face, which was a whole year of faces. And then now that was just so that I could do the fairy tale quest, which it was supposed to be only 2018, but the Selkie crushed my soul. Mm. <laughs> so it took into 2019. And then I did finish her. It was a struggle. It was the battle of my life. And then uh, we're finishing them up, and they'll be done by 2020. So, <laughs> so all you have to do is sign this one, and then, then but, this one. Will but be they're done. just like they're about an hour long, and they're multi segments, and some of them are six parters, and but they're very involved. This one's going to be under three hours. We're at two forty. Really this is pretty cool. And under three hours, man. Right? Boy, we've had some of them that were three hours just for a for a part. Well, no, no. <laughs> when we do the big art quest, we. Break them down into a maximum of an hour. This is the first one we've ever done over an hour. We meet once a week for an hour and do a segment. And then meet again next week for an hour and do a segment. So my big art questers are going to have to, you know, pace themselves on this one and break it down into segments. And that's the other reason that I took those little pictures is so that they could um, kind of pace themselves into it. Because on big projects where you're going to be in it for... You know, anywhere from six to twenty hours. You need it's a marathon, not a sprint. So you got to pace yourself. That's one. Of, it's something you know. Sometimes as a as a beginning artist, you might not understand. And the the big art quest kind of helps you learn how to manage just even your. Oh, that's so awesome. This is good as Lachuza, right? All right, a oh, face forward because she's so. Oh, look at her! Isn't she just the winter she snow maiden? She turned out pretty amazing. To be? Boy is the last one. Ah ha ha. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.